मैडम इट इज ट्वेल्व प्लस थ्री नो यस सर and all the four people are present or sir i was just checking i think two are there two are already there huh. sir uh, i think we can start sir okay digashri yes ma'am who will start now megashri will start sir. yes sir okay uh, good afternoon everyone i welcome you all to the technical session 2 of the conference uh, so now the session will be chaired by uh, two professors uh, dr mn hegde and dr neetu aras a brief introduction about dr mn hegde dr mn hegde was a professor of civil engineering and dean academics at dr ambedkar institute of technology bengaluru sir had held the position of secretary of indian concrete institute icikbc from 2003 2004 and 2008 to 2011 sir was also the chairman of acce india bengaluru center from 2015 to 17 Sir was member of Board of Governors Instruct Bengaluru from 2017 to 2019. Sir is an executive committee member of Indian Society of Earthquake Technology. Sir, sir has also guided five candidates for PhD degree under BTU. Dr. M N Hegde's area of interest is FEM in stochastic structural dynamics and earthquake engineering, system identification. structural health and damage assessment of civil infrastructures fiber reinforced concrete life cycle energy cost of buildings sir is an aict expert member for evc visits he is an local inquiry committee lic vtu belagavi member he is member of various professional bodies like iste iei ici acce and instruct He is also a reviewer of American Concrete Institute Journal. He has published two books and received two best paper awards. He has delivered about fifty-eight lectures. Sir has to his credit twenty-two national seminar papers, thirty international conference paper, nine national journal papers, and thirty-two international journal journals. Sir is presently working as an independent consultant on integrated life cycle design of structures. performance and service life prediction of structures and prognosis sir we are pleased to have you as a part of our conference and request you to kindly chair this session thank you megashri for the nice introduction and uh, for the audio audience uh, audience i will be joining again dr ambedkar institute of technology as a professor for pg studies from today okay. oh that's so nice that sir. okay thank you Nice to know that, sir. Oh, yeah, today I received the appointment only. Along with Dr. M. N. Hegde, we have Dr. Neetu Aras. Uh, introduction about Neetu Aras. Neetu Aras did her civil engineering from P. S. C. E. Mandya, Mysore University. She uh, she did her M. Tech in industrial structures from S. J. C. E. Mysore and P. H. D. from V. T. U. in the topic. damage detection and assessment of residual strength of structures using vibration based techniques under the guidance of under the guidance of dr mn hegde she has worked as design engineer for over 4 years and designed numerous steel structures for zindal vijayanagar steel she has also designed many multi storied concrete structures she has 15 years of teaching experience and over 10 years of research experience and published over 20 technical papers she has guided over 30 pg and 19 ug projects she is the managing committee uh, member of indian concrete institute bengaluru chapter 
Ma'am, I welcome you for this technical session. Thank you, thank you, Megashree. Thank you for the introduction, and I am happy to co-chair with my guide, Dr. Emil Hegde, sir. Uh, sir, uh, can you please uh, uh, let the participants know the uh, guidelines of presentation? Okay, uh, for the presenters, for the for paper presenters, you have overall fifteen minutes time. And uh, in that, uh, 12 minutes for your presentation and three minutes for the questionnaires. And uh, immediately after the presentation, you will have one or two questions uh, for that uh, uh, for the presenter. The there will be up to the question answer session for that session. Uh, that particular presentation is over. The next session, uh, next presenter will start his presentation. I think uh, uh, I request uh, Dr. Nitu Aras to. Start with the presentation study. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, the first paper will be Behavior of the Multi-Story RC Structure Subjected to Sudden Column La uh, Loss Scenario by Akshata Kulkarni and Chaitanya Akkanavar. Good afternoon. Can Good afternoon, yeah. ma'am. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, can you please present your screen? Akshata, right? Yes, yes ma'am. Is it visible? No. 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 I think no. Uh, Not uh, permission. Uh, can you please uh, grant permission? Yeah, yeah, we can see. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, you can start, Akshata. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm myself, Akshata Kushtigi, working as a lecturer in Government Polytechnic Bagalpur in the Department of Civil Engineering. My co author is Mr. Chaitanya Akanavar. Uh, he's working as assist assistant professor in Kelly Technological University, Hubli. Today, I would like to present our work on uh, the topic behavior of the multi story RC structure subjected to sudden column loss scenario. Uh, before I start, I would like to give an introduction about progressive collapse word. Uh, when an RC structure is subjected to any extreme condition of loading, like uh, earthquake, fire hazards, or any vehicle accidents, one or the other member, uh, the load carrying member that may be a column or a beam, uh, mostly columns, uh, can fail. When such load carrying members uh, fail due to any natural or man-made man -made hazardous, uh, that uh, damage may propagate through the adjacent members uh, like beams and columns, uh, resulting in partial collapse of the structure or full collapse of the structure. This chain reaction of failing from one member to another member is termed as progressive collapse. Uh, the objective of our uh, work is to understand the effect of location of column loss on the structure, means uh, which column is critical, the location of the column, corner, middle column, center column, the, uh, the location of the column matters uh, in the progressive collapse. Then to perform the various analysis like linear static analysis, non-linear static analysis, linear dynamic analysis, non-linear dynamic analysis, and evaluation the evaluation of the progressive collapse, whether the building is resisting that progressive collapse or not, using all these four analysis. Then to calculate the demand capacity ratios uh, for various parameters like flexural strength, actual load of the members, uh, then shear. Uh, after that, comparing the uh, DCR ratios, that is demand capacity ratios, and displacement of uh, the node at uh, column removal location uh, to study the behavior of the structure. Methodology includes preparation of a 3D model using any software. Uh, we have used uh, ETAP software here. And uh, first, uh, first, the building is tested for the normal working conditions. After the building is tested for normal working condition, uh, the capacity of the building will be known. After that, the column is removed and uh, DCR values, that is demand capacity ratio values are found out for various analysis like linear static, non-linear static, linear dynamic and non-linear dynamic. These demand capacity ratios will be uh, compared and the final, uh, the building, the structural performance will be uh, analyzed. The General Service Administration, GSA 2013, has formed some guidelines for this uh, progressive collapse analysis. Uh, they have recommended some loading combinations. For static analysis, uh, the loading combination is uh, 2 multiplied by 1.2 dead load plus 0.5 live load, with, uh, whereas for dynamic analysis, it is 1.2 dead load plus 0.5 live load. 
using these loading combination we will perform the analysis the demand uh, of the uh, critical points or demand demand of the beams and columns uh, will be accessed then capacity will be known to us while designing these demand to capacity ratio is called as dcr ratio demand divided by capacity these dcr ratios can be calculated for any parameter like fracture strength shear strength uh, axial load any any for any parameter we can apply this formula then what is acceptance criteria this dcr value should not exceed the number 2 the ratio should be within 2 for symmetric configuration and 1.5 for asymmetric configuration according to gsa gsa has recommended uh, one more uh, thing here like uh, the location of the column to be removed this location of column can be corner column the middle column of the shorter span or the middle column of the longer span and interior column these four column position have been suggested by gsa Uh, which are more uh, per, uh, susceptible for the column uh, progressive collapse of the structure here we have taken g plus 5 building we have analyzed for all the four conditions all the four uh, location of the column out of which this corner column has increased the uh, acceptance criteria that is 2 these values have come about to so the corner column was proved to be a most critical one among all these four which is more susceptible for uh, progressive collapse hence uh, we extended our study to g plus 7 building here in this g plus 7 building using uh, the these parameters we have uh, designed the building these are the configuration of the structure here we have uh, eliminated this corner column this column corner column elimination is affected the adjacent beams and adjacent columns these the load of this a uh, corner column will be uh, distributed to these adjacent member so i have highlighted it in uh, red color we will be studying the demand capacity ratios of these uh, y direction beams and these x direction beams and x direction column y direction column these two columns and these beams we will be uh, dealing with dcr values the first analysis that is linear static analysis it is very simple one here the column is removed and the load will be distributed to the other members the uh, the loading combination will be taken as uh, 2 into 1.2 dead load plus 0.5 live load as suggested by gsa uh, then the demand here we will get the demand of this uh, uh, demand of the structure or demand of these beams then similarly capacity of the beam will be known to us by calculating the dcr values we can access whether the uh, the building is uh, resistant towards the progressive collapse or not the results were uh, like uh, here we can see these beams here these beams have increased uh, dcr values have shown up above to whether and uh, uh, the above beams are safe against the progressive collapse similarly the axial load uh, when we tested the dcr values these columns proved to be a within the limit of 2 means the columns are resistant towards the progressive collapse but here some beams have shown Uh, the value above the acceptance criteria these beams can be redesigned means reinforcement can be increased uh, for this uh, uh, repair work the second analysis is non linear static analysis this analysis uh, the loading combination will be same as that of linear static analysis that is 2 into 1.2 dead load plus 0.5 live load here this pushing effect will be taken into consideration when the column is removed suddenly the building shakes and the pushing effect will be there on the building this pushing effect will be uh, drawn in the graph of uh, shear versus uh, displacement displacement and shear uh, the graph will uh, give you the performance point of the building whether the building is resistant towards a progressive collapse or not what is this performance indicator this performance indicator is divided the graph of uh, this force and displacement graph is divided into five points that is a b c d e this a to b zone is known as the operational level zone means the structure is in elastic range here b to c zone is again divided into io ls and cp io means immediate occupancy level life safety level collapse prevention level means when the beams uh, when the hinges are within this limit the, uh, the these are the force and displacement curve for the hinges when the hinges fall under this limit it means that it requires the minor repair work but the structure will not collapse once the hinges fall to this zone c to c d e zone the structure may the structure will collapse the, these are the acceptance criteria one more point is there here performance point the intersection of capacity curve and demand spectrum here this is a demand spectrum 
ABC is a called as a demand spectrum. This red line is demand spectrum, while the green line shows the capacity of our structure. The capacity of our structure uh, should coincide with this demand curve. This demand spectrum both should uh, intersect at some point. If this intersection is existing, there there is the existence of performance point. If that performance point is existing, then it it is said that building building is having a sufficient resistance or sufficient strength towards the progressive collapse. This is the result of our uh, analysis structure. That is uh, here the performance point is existing in our case. While coming to the DCR of this non-linear static analysis, this demand to capacity ratios have shown up. Uh, a bit more extra than uh, acceptance criteria these beams have shown up larger than acceptance limit so these beams can be redesigned the reinforcement can be increased or beam size can sizes can be altered while the other uh, things like columns actual loads dcr values are well within the limit columns are safe against the progressive collapse the third analysis is linear dynamic analysis here the dynamic effect will be taken into consideration uh, for this dynamic effect uh, the uh, the procedure is time history analysis time history analysis and the loading combination will be 1.2 dead load plus 0.5 live load using this combination the structure is analyzed and uh, with the help of time history analysis in this time history analysis uh, the one thing we have to consider is initial condition should kept uh, to zero set to zero means the building is assumed to be not deformed uh, before uh, not deformed until the column is removed the building is in elastic state until the column is removed so they have it has not undergone any deflection so by assuming this initial condition as zero time history analysis is done this is the maximum deflection of time history curve of node one means joint one where the column where we have removed the column the dcr values uh, in from this analysis it has shown that uh, all the dcr values of beams as well as columns are within the limit of 2 hence the structure is safe against the progressive collapse uh, it is more resistant the last one is non linear dynamic analysis it is very uh, important and uh, it is bit difficult to perform this because it consider the non linearity also and dynamic effect also here the procedure involves creating a model and apply gravity load in non linear case that is uh, 1.2 dead load plus 0.5 load combination then we have to run the analysis the column should be present whatever column we are removing it should be present in its position after that we, uh, the the present column is uh, considered fail means that we have to remove the column now instead of uh, the column we have to apply the equal equivalent axial load at the point of column removal in opposite direction that is upward direction this equivalent load is taken as dead load here the column is removed here but equivalent uh, point load in the upward direction is placed that is 1262.75 kN in our case this is the axial force of the member which we have removed it has to be applied in the opposite direction then load case named gravity load was for, uh, was generated this gravity load is uh, the 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 point load which we have kept in the upward direction and here initial condition will time history analysis is performed keeping this as our initial condition the upward direction load will be our uh, initial condition after the uh, the initial load is the gravity load is applied the time history uh, analysis will be started this is the curve we have got time history curve the observations are here also we have got the dcr values more than 2 in some beams and the columns are within two column dcr values are within two so we can conclude here here also we require some uh, alterations in the design of the beams uh, this is a comparative graph uh, which shows uh, the dcr values of beams in x direction uh, which are more than two for some up to some fourth floor beams here in y direction also up to some fourth floor they have shown about two these beams have to be redesigned or increasing the reinforcement will uh, do these are the comparative graph of uh, columns dcr values are within one year both in uh, x direction both in y direction so columns can handle the load of that removed column so columns will not fail so here when i have removed this column this was the displacement occurred here so this displacement is 10.5 for linear static 10.7 for non linear static 11 for linear dynamic and 11.9 for linear non linear dynamic 
so nearly they have shown the same result only 1 mm difference is there uh, so we can uh, say all uh, we can compare the, the displacement of this node or joint the conclusion is uh, the corner column was more susceptible for the progressive collapse among all the four uh, positions then demand capacity there exists a demand capacity performance point when uh, this demand curve is coincided with the capacity curve means there is a margin of safety is there against the progressive collapse dcr values deflection at joint one is studied and uh, the structure we can conclude that the structure is is having sufficient strength towards the progressive collapse future scope uh, this study can be extended towards the uh, various slab condition like flat slab or grid slab then uh, for various bay widths and different story heights i have taken here symmetric structure this can be done to the unsymmetric plan or tall structure with varying story heights thank you any questions ah uh, sir sir any questions uh head day sir okay uh, uh i have uh, like before i ask you the question akshata it was a excellent pr presentation Thank and you. the work is also really good because uh, uh, this is the scenario which is actually practical case you have taken like head day scenario in yes. uh, most of the buildings and um, yes uh, my question for you is uh, uh, see uh, you, you did not speak about the distance between the columns so how would it affect uh, the case because when the distance yes, between the uh, columns yeah, increases yes ma'am the, the, the bay width is surely affected ma'am i have ah. taken here symmetric structure ma'am Yeah, yeah. The distance I have kept same for all the columns. Mm -hmm. uh, we can extend this study to asymmetric structure also, where column distance varies. Okay. But okay, you have not done a work on it. You have you have just taken a symmetric. No, ma'am. No. Okay, fine. And yes, uh, ma'am. Uh, this is symmetric. Okay. okay. Uh, did you include any shear wall concept also? Because that is a mandatory thing. And uh, if you uh, remove the column, then again uh, that will be affected. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. But uh, in this particular study, we have not included, ma'am. Okay. Uh, this is the basic uh, study, so we have done a basic uh, model here. Mm hmm. So in future, we have uh, planned to include such things, ma'am. Unsymmetrical buildings or shear wall concept and all, ma'am. Okay. First, we we wanted to analyze the simple structure using all four analysis, ma'am. Mm hmm. okay uh, akshata uh, i think there was a problem with the sir is calling me now so i think sir was uh, connection uh, there was a problem so if you can hold on i'll just ask sir what it is yes ma'am no problem yeah uh, 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 there was a problem with uh, the connection uh, so sir has suggested me to uh, move on with the next paper so okay. thank you akshata thank okay. you uh, so we'll uh, move on to the second paper that much. is uh, strength development of ggbs uh, based mortar brick beneath distinctive curing conditions and masonry strength prediction uh, it's by uh, manikandan uh, sivasankar gokul ambal devi and ashok good 
afternoon, ma'am. Yeah, good afternoon. You can start, start your presentation. Good afternoon to everyone. Our topic is strength development of GGBS based on water brick. Uh, beneath distinct curing conditions and uh, masonry strength predictions. Uh, it's our colleagues. colleagues uh, I'm Ambal Devi and my colleagues are Manigandan and uh, Ashok, uh, student of National Engineering College and Mr. Shivashankar and Mr. Gokul from uh, Assistant Professor of uh, National Engineering College. It's a content. Uh, our study investigates the poten potential use of one of the supplementary cementitious materials such as brown granulated blast furnace slab. That's GGBS as an alternative material. The advantage of GGBS are long term strength gain and as a GGBS supplemented cement shows a lower rate of strength gain at the uh, initial stage and that uh, and shows higher rate at a later stage compared to ordinary cement and reduces the risk of corrosion. Our government has imposed various norms on the implementation of uh, river sand for construction purposes and uh, it also contains deleterious materials such as clay and uh, organic matter. So we effectively replace M sand in place of river sand. This study ad adopts heat curing, heat curing treatment with accelerates, which accelerate cement hydration and also steam curing treatment where cement is cured by steam at atmospheric pressure and with the minimum amount of time to increase the production rate. Properties of materials. First, you, first we use cement. Uh, the cement uh, grade is 53 grade and a uh, specific gravity of cement is 3.134 and uh, we, we find that the consistency of, of cement is 32% and the fineness is 5%. GGBS, uh, the specific gravity of GGBS is 2.85 and the bulk density of uh, 1454 uh, kg per meter cube and the consistency value of 33%. Next, fine aggregate. Uh, we we in this uh, project we have used M sand as a fine fine aggregate. Uh, we have compared river sand and M sand with uh, with their physical properties, and a specific gravity of river sand is two point six seven, and M sand is two point six three. Bulk unit weight is one point thousand six ninety two kg per meter cube and thousand six eighty five kg per meter cube, and the finest modulus are three point three three and three point one zero, and the uniformity coefficient and the uh, coefficient of curvature were as this table. And the mi mixed proportion we used in this uh, uh, project is 1 is to 2, 1 is to 3, and 1 is to 4, uh, with the varying water content of 11% and 12%. 11% is uh, we get from our consistency values, and uh, there's an increased value for water content. From this, we have a uh, fixed our mix ratio of 1 is to 3 because we have a, we have greater strength in this ratio at the 12% water content and then experimental study in this we have a, made a normal curing with the varying of ggps content uh, in this we have used 1 is to 3 with the 12% water content uh, we have get a higher strength at 50% replacement of ggps and this is a graphical representation of that uh, varying GDBS content with a constant uh, mix ratio of 1 to 3 and 12% uh, water content. In this graphical representation, we, have, we get a higher value at a 50% replacement of 25 Newton per minimum square. And then it is an uh, uh, empirical relations for uh, finding masonry compressive strength. Uh, we have we have uh, find out that uh, brick unit compressive strength. We have we have already find out, and then from this value we have uh, find we have we have find out using this value, and uh, we find out the masonry compressive strength. And this is a 
compressive strength test result using heat curing. In this, we have fixed the flux ratio as 1 to 3 and the water content as 12%. And we have fixed here also the percentage of replacement as 50 and 50 and the temperature varying temperature are 80, 90 and 100, 120. From this, we have a higher, uh, we get a higher strength at, at a temperature of 100, 100 degrees Celsius at a heat, heat curing. And this is a compressive strength test result of a steam curing. In this, we have we all, already we have fixed the mix ratio water content and the cement and GDBS at 50 and 50 percentage. Here we also varying the temperature as 70 and 80 degrees Celsius at a constant uh, time of eight eight hours, and uh, we get a higher strength at 70 degrees Celsius. And this is a water absorption test. We have tested for 15 bricks. And uh, these water absorption values are within the limit of 12 to 20% for bricks. And uh, hardness soluble salts and the soundness test. In these tests also, the values are within the uh, limits. Results and discussion. Uh, in this in this our product project and the initial water content chosen was 11 percent as per is code and the further increases to 12 percent and the compressive strength of honest of 16.96 mpa then proportion cement water cube and the compressive strength of cement with 50 percent replacement of ggps gives highest strength the brick made with the honest three ratio 12 percent uh, with the 12 percent water content shows the higher compressive strength of 25 mpa the water absorption of the brick was found to be less than eight percent for all mortar bricks sample casted with the replacement of ggps and uh, up to 50 percent replacement of ggps uh, water absorption values moderately low compared to other mixes up to 50% replacement of GGPS, calcium hydroxide react with GGPS to form CH, CSH gel. After that, further increase in GGPS, its reactivity with calcium hydroxide, and it also has fine, it, it also acts as a fine aggregate, so water absorption value increased. Next, mortar brick also, mortar brick also then casted with 50% GGPS replacement, and they're kept in both heat curing and steam curing for a time of eight hours and at different temperature and uh, the maximum compressive strength attained on a heat curing at 100 degrees Celsius is 14.135 Newton per mm squared and then steam curing at 70 degrees Celsius is 16.467 Newton by mm squared and the compressive strength of standard building brick and the first class brick is 3.5 its value is around between 3.5 to 10 uh, newton per mm square respectively but ggps mortar brick exhibit compressive strength up to 25 newton per mm square with 50 percent ggps replacement under ordinary curing with 100 percent replacement of ggps in place of cement compressive strength is more than 10 mpa all the samples tested for soundness, hardness, and the soluble salts test also gave a good results for us. And final conclusion is GGBS contains nearly 50% of calcium oxide content compared to cement. Partial substitution of cement with GGBS of 50% substitution gives higher compressive strength. In case of load bearing structure, this type of brick is very, very useful and effective because strength of brick is, brick is also moderate under elevated temperature both in steam curing and heat curing it gives compressive strength is more than 10 mpa and hence it is concluded that utilization of ggbs up to 50 percent in place of cement the performance of the brick were good compared to the con conventional one when temperature was too high condensation interfered with the further dissolution process resulting in loss of strength Empirical relations suggest by Kausi et al. Eurocode and ASA good gives conser conservative results than other relations. Ah, you can tell me. Tell me. And these ah. are the references we have.
made in the work in our project thank you sir uh, i have one question is it your uh, mtech work or uh, mtech thesis work or uh, phd work no sir no sir b tech b tech okay what is what is uh, in what way your work is different from others work sir we have uh, separated we have uh, focused on our project sir with a uh, constant uh, temperature and a mix ratio from first first process onwards sir we have made a separate research on the temperature and the mix ratio sir professor neetu you have any other question yes sir i i just wanted to ask uh, uh, brick size uh, they have chosen she has uh, given shown the mold so how did you choose the size of the brick that particular size ambal ma'am it's a con yeah. actually okay Yes, it is a chamber chamber brick size, ma'am. Okay. Ah, uh, you have referred some papers, no? What was the size of the brick chosen there? They are they have used standard brick size, ma'am. Okay, that's why I just wanted to know how what made you to choose this. And one more thing is, ah, uh, you have compared uh, the different codes, right? and there is lot of variation in the compressive strength uh, one coat to other there is lot of variation so which one uh, you have concluded uh, uh, one or two coats like you have chosen what made you to take that one because when there is no variation you, it is easy for you to conclude so there was variation no yeah thank you the same slide so here here there is a lot of variation that's why i just wanted to ask Um, they have used different yeah. types of brick size ma'am they can use their standard brick size no no this is you you have carried out right yes ma'am uh, so i just wanted to ask why there is variation in the uh, masonry compressive strength ma'am uh repeat maybe they one. may be using they might be using different uh, country bricks of different places no for the same mix it when the average compression is yeah because there is lot of variation here uh, ambal uh, for example uh, uh, take the last one mix 11 you can just compare you can just compare that the results are vary so why is it like that they may use a different water content or a different ratio then we cannot compare it yes ma'am we cannot compare the different things right okay okay ambal it was a good presentation thank you thank you uh so we will move on to the third paper uh, sir with your permission can i uh, uh move okay, on to okay, the third okay, paper okay. yes sir it's a repair uh, rehabilitation and retrofitting of structures by gomasa ramesh gomasa ramesh are you there yes ma'am i'm ready ma'am yeah thank you you can start presenting now has he responded yes sir yes it is Madam, ramesh has he Yes, ma'am. I'm ready, ma'am. Okay, you start presenting now. Ma'am, my 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 voice is audible. Yes, you are audible. Okay, you can go ahead. You share your presentation. You please share your presentation. my uh, voice is audible sir 
Yes, your voice is Hello, audible. Sir? Your voice is audible. But you are uh, share. You should uh, share your presentation. Hello, sir. One second. One second. Uh, your uh, presentation. गुड आफ्टरनून टू आल दि प्रोफेसर पार्टिसिपेंट्स टूडे मै प्रेसेशन इज गोइंग टू रिपेर रिहाबिलेशन एंड रिट्रोबिटिंग स्ट्रक्चर बै गोमा सर रमेश एम टेक् स्ट्रक्चरल इंजीनियर वागदेवी कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियर वरंगल आई एम गोइंग टू शेयर मै प्रेजेशन फर्स्ट कंटेंट इंपारटेंट डेफिनेशन एंड नीड फर् रिट्रो फिटिंग रिपेर मेथडालजी मेटीरियल यूज एंड रिपेर टेक्निक टेस्ट एंड रिजल्ट कंक्लूजन फॉलोड बै दि रिफरेंस सो इंट्रडक्शन एव्री स्ट्रक्चर Uh, every structure constructed to serve uh, various purpose after the aging of the structure it is subjected to repair of after the repair uh, the structure is subjected to damage so we have to repair the structure in early age to avoid the damage so structural repairs and rehabilitation is a process of reconstruction and renewal of the structural elements to save uh, economy of the structure uh, the it involves determine of the origin of the stress and uh, removing the damaged material and cause of distress in this we have to identify the cause and uh, parts uh, to improve the strength of the structure uh, select suitable repair materials and methods and extend structure's life so this is a graphic abstract in this uh, key terms are present uh, repair rehabilitation restoration retrofitting reengineering modeling after that uh, important definition uh, what is repair so repair is nothing but to bring back to original position of the structure uh, to compare to previous condition so it does not cover the strength aspect it covers the only position of the structure next to rehabilitation uh, rehabilitation of a structure means returning your structure into a useful service condition uh, useful service condition to modify the structure next retrofitting it is a modification of existing structure to make them more resistant strong and durable uh, it is used to vary, uh, various uh various methods are used to uh, strengthen the structure and need for retrofitting so to increase the strength to increase the bond uh, to improve the proper connection between the elements to improve the uh, to improve the strength and durability to eliminate the weakness avoid failure damages uh these are u- useful for retrofitting uh repair methodology first uh, first is evaluation and observation inspection inspection is done uh, after the selection selection of methods materials preparation of drawings and specifications uh, selection of uh, good skill labor after that we can, we can uh, execute our work and quality control and check the state of, status of the structure after uh, in this we have uh, usual material is cement slurry cement mortar quick setting cement steel reinforcement epoxy resin polymer modified cementation products cement slurry it is the mixture of the cement uh, cement and water a uh, cement mortar uh, it consists of cement sand and water a uh, heat setting cement uh, setting uh, uh, setting time is very good uh, steel reinforcement can be used epoxy resin is a good adhesive it can, it can be used polymer modified cement test products which can be used to remove uh, to prevent the corrosion and uh, corrosion and prevent the uh, water into the um, concrete next repair techniques in this we have used res- uh, res- resin injection stitching grouting gunniting jacketing short grid routing and sealing these are the important techniques we can use in the in this project uh, this is resin injects in this narrow cracks uh, there are these are about to 0.5 mm in this uh, 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 cracks are filled with uh, uh, resin and uh, uh, epoxy materials uh, in this uh, we have to fill the epoxy material in the cracks after that stitching uh, stitching is done by using suitable uh, u shaped rods uh, in the cracks uh, these are stresses uh, these are occurs due to increase of tensile stresses 
సో క్రాక్స్ ఆర్ ఫార్మ్డ్ సో ఇన్ దిస్ యూజ్ చేయబడి మెటీరియల్స్ ఆర్ ప్లేస్డ్ అండ్ మా బాండింగ్ మెటీ బాండింగ్ మెటీరియల్స్ ఆర్ ప్లేస్డ్ బిట్వీన్ దెమ్ అండ్ టు ఇంక్రీస్ ది టెన్షన్ స్ట్రెసెస్ ఇన్ ది స్ట్రక్చర్ ఆఫ్టర్ ద ఇంజెక్షన్ ఆఫ్ గ్రౌటింగ్ గ్రౌటింగ్ సో వాట్ ఎవర్ డ్యామేజ్ మెటీరియల్స్ ఆర్ దేర్ వీ హ్యావ్ టు అప్లై ది గ్రౌటింగ్ టు ది స్ట్రక్చర్ టు అవాయిడ్ ది డ్యామేజెస్ ఇన్ ది స్ట్రక్చర్ టు ఇంప్రూవ్ ది స్ట్రెంగ్ నెక్స్ట్ గునైటింగ్ గునైటింగ్ ఇస్ డన్ బై యూజింగ్ బై యూజింగ్ సూటబుల్ సిమెంట్ మోటార్ ఆఫ్టర్ దట్ ద డిస్టెన్స్ బిట్వీన్ ది సర్ఫేస్ టు ది నాజిల్ ఈ సెవెన్ ఫిఫ్టీ టు ఎయిట్ ఫిఫ్టీ ఎంఎం ఎట్ ది ప్రెషర్ ఆఫ్ ట్వంటీ టు రమేష్ జస్ట్ ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ యువర్ వర్క్ ఎస్ సార్ ఎస్ సార్ సార్ ఐ థింక్ ఇట్స్ జస్ట్ అ రివ్యూ జస్ట్ అ రివ్యూ పేపర్ ఐ డోంట్ థింక్ యు హావ్ డన్ ఎనీ వర్క్ రైట్ రమేష్ ఆ ఐ హావ్ టేకన్ రిఫరెన్స్ మ్యామ్ యా సర్ ఇట్స్ జస్ట్ అ రివ్యూ పేపర్ దెన్ వాట్ ఇస్ యువర్ కాంట్రిబ్యూషన్ ఫర్ దిస్ వర్క్ ఆ ఇన్ దిస్ మే ఐ మెయిన్ ఐ హావ్ టు ఫాలో ది ఇంపార్టెంట్ మెథడ్స్ అండ్ వేరియస్ టైప్స్ ఆఫ్ టెక్నిక్స్ యూజువలీ ఇన్ ది ఇండస్ట్రీ కన్స్ట్రక్షన్ సార్ ఇన్ బిల్డింగ్ కన్స్ట్రక్షన్ అంటే మెంబర్స్ టు ప్రి టు ప్రివెంట్ ది వేరియస్ టైప్స్ ఆఫ్ డ్యామేజ్ ఇస్ ఇట్ ఓకే కెన్ ఐ కంటిన్యూ Yeah, yeah, you can please continue. Uh, the pressure uh, 22 to 30 newton per centimeter can be applied to the concrete surface. Next, jacketing. Uh, it is jacket or uh, reinforcement. It is provided around the concrete. It is used to increase the structural sectional uh, member, sectional member of the structure and also increase the load carrying capacity of the structure. Uh, after that jacketing concrete is applied into the structure to increase the load carrying capacity next to short crete short crete uh, uh, where is uh, where is any damages or repairs are there uh, that uh, part uh, can be applied in short crete to increase the strength the strong uh, to improve the strength of the concrete structure after that rooting and sealing uh, rooting and sealing it, it can be applied for uh, fine cracks and uh, me, uh, median cracks uh, a crack can be filled by grouting and uh, resin uh, various epoxy materials and then see uh, uh, joint sealers sealers are used to finish the work uh, this is original crack uh, after that uh, uh, rooting and sealing uh, various then uh, in this case tests are used rebound hammer test and uh, ultrasonic pulse velocity test and penetration resistant test pull out test and pull off test so rebound hammer test uh, it is especially uh, it is useful for concrete structures in this uh, plunger is pressed into the concrete surface after that locking button uh, rebound uh, which shows the value uh, Ramesh, to know the you have uh, one more minute you can start with your conclusion okay uh, directly i can go to conclusion ma'am yeah, better uh, okay ma'am uh, this is rebound hammer uh, this is average uh, rebound hammer with respect to quality of concrete upv test uh, and uh, this is our values of the upv test penetration resistant test windsor probe test it is also gems point 007 test uh, this is uh, exposed length to uh, strength of the concrete and pull out test uh, it is pull out force to compress strength of the concrete and pull off test uh, it gives the tensile force uh, tensile strength to concrete uh, with respect to force uh, tensile strength of concrete which is uh, determined by force by disc area Uh, conclusion so it can be play a significant role to repair the structure at early age to to save economy and uh, to save the cost of the structure and uh, to strengthen the structure and uh, to maintain a structural integrity integrity with uh, uh, economical condition and uh, these are simple uh, tests are used uh, it is used to uh, identify early stage and improve structures it is necessary to prevent mitigate damages and failure to and avoid failures to the structural system uh, these are my references thank you thank you ma'am mr ramesh yes sir uh, am i audible yes sir yes, it's sir. a presentation of, of your understand your understanding of repair and uh, measuring the strength of the structures things like that 
the international conference of this type you need to present something what you have con uh, contributed in the area okay anyway yes, sir. it's all right okay Okay. Next, you 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 Madam, can Madam, try to. Do you have any question? Uh, that that's it, sir. Because it's a review paper, I don't have any questions. Just one suggestion is. Okay. Okay. Next. You move on uh, to the next paper. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will do that. Uh, thank you, Ramesh. Ah, uh, uh, the thanks, next. Ah, uh, next paper is the facade structural audit of high-rise buildings using drone-based survey. Ah, uh, by uh, Suresh Sahu. Suresh, is he available? I think. Yes, sir. I I saw him actually. He is there. Has he entered? Yes, sir. I saw him in the beginning of the conference. Mr. Suresh. I guess he is not there, uh, ma. Okay, maybe some problem because I was seeing uh, first half an hour to one hour. One hour he was there. So, sir, if he is not available, I think uh, we can conclude with your uh, closing remarks. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you for all the uh, presentations made by the people. Uh, for their contribution, mm -hmm. uh, the topic of the today's presentation basically on sustainability issues and uh, the new paradigms in uh, civil engineering. Uh, we, we, we basically we are supposed to concentrate on the the research work carried out on the sustainability issues, wherein we need to. Uh, give importance to the life cycle study, uh, which deals with uh, the performance and then uh, uh, sustainably optimization, etc. When you talk about uh, durability, where you need to concentrate on serviceability, service life of the structure. The new techniques uh, of research today concentrates on the sensing of or uh, infrastructure sensing wherein you need to detect the damage and uh, make a damage assessment and then uh, once you make a assessment of the damage using uh, the sensors and then analytical techniques you have to make uh, you have to convert this information into uh, see this data collection into an information and then uh, uh, so suggest suitable measures the research must focus on uh, basically on because in all infrastructures are aging we need to look into the uh, monitoring and uh, structural health monitoring basically and then uh, a lot of sensors are available and our uh, work should focus on that ndt non destructive testing non destructive evaluation using the, the tools which are available is one one such uh, thing the other thing is we need to we can use softwares um, basically to know vibration based methods and stochastic uh, finite element method is uh, one another method where uh, you can also consider the uncertainty in uh, the system the big data analysis because a lot of information is collected using sensors the big data analysis wherein you need to you can use uh, uh, hadoop or map reduce techniques uh, to under, uh, minimize uh, the import uh, or uh, sort out the uh, data and then make conclusion. Today, the research is basically the extensive research is carried out on deep learning, machine learning, and uh, using artificial neural uh, network. And uh, IoT application, of course, is used for checking and controlling of uh, uh, the operations of the infrastructure. And in addition to this, we need to think, uh, think of the what is happening in the field. Uh, the, because the many times we have, we disturb the structures with the deep cutting 
or uh, we disturb the structures with uh, so many machineries you know, we use so many machineries wherein the columns may sink or there may be some settlement localized settlements which affect the performance of the structures the research must focus on various issues of this type and rather than the traditional thing what uh, uh, the over the years people have done and we just uh, extend them uh, to our uh, convenience uh, okay anyway uh, thank you for the opportunity given to me and uh, hope this uh, conference will end up with some useful uh, thinking thank you madam thank you sir thank you madam thank you sir thank you Yes, ma. Oh, thank you, sir. A best paper award for each day shall be selected and announced on the last day of the conference. I feel honored and privileged to get the opportunity to propose a vote of thanks for the first day of the conference. We had about 250 delegates in today's session. On behalf of the organizing departments, I convey my regards and heartly thanks to our keynote speakers, Dr. Vijay P. Singh, Texas A&M University, USA, and Mr. Kumar Ramaswamy, ACOM, Auckland, New Zealand. I also like to thank Dr. M. N. Hegde, Dr. Jyoti T. K., Dr. P. Prakash, and Dr. Neetu Aras for being session chairpersons. I would also like to extend my heartfelt thanks to all the presenters and participants of today's sessions. Last but not least, I would like to thank the organizers and technical support team working hard for smooth conduction of the sessions. Tomorrow, we shall join for the technical session at 10 a.m. with the same link. Thank you all so much. Have a good day. Thank you.